gun Ramos looking like he's got one more good run Sips a little shaky But his heart is still true Oh how that dog loves hunting with me and you Sporting dog adventures run boy run Everything you need is here under the sun Hey, this is Jeff Fuller of Soggy Acres Retrievers and Sporting Dog Adventures TV. We have had a great run showing our love for dogs with our show, our podcast, our social media, and all that is based on Soggy Acres Retrievers. We proudly bring this podcast to you by Soggy Acres Retrievers and ask you, if you are looking for training, boarding, or a yellow, black, or chocolate Labrador Retriever puppies, please check out SoggyAcres.com. Remember, everyone deserves a Soggy Dog. Welcome to the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Fuller of Soggy Acres Retrievers. And I was kind of struggling because I'm, I'm deer hunting. I'm in deer hunting mode, taking a little break from duck hunting, and wanted to talk about, honestly, what my favorite hunt is with dogs. And surprise, surprise, it's not waterfall hunting. We're actually taking the dogs out on a release bird pheasant hunt this weekend. And I have to tell you, that is something that I really enjoy. Before I started filming uh, outdoor TV and had a hunting show, uh, I didn't duck hunt often because of the fact that I really enjoy being out walking and pheasant hunting. And then my other passion... Uh, along with duck hunting is deer hunting. So I only had time for two. So I had to cut something out. So duck hunting usually was the one that got the, the I guess, axe, as we could say. But it is something that I really enjoy getting out. I enjoy, I think I enjoy it because you're just walking. You're not sitting still. I also enjoy when you look at big game hunting, going elk hunting in the mountains or mule deer hunting in Montana. I enjoy having the opportunity to get out and to move as opposed to sitting still. Don't get me wrong. I love shooting a limited ducks. I love getting a really nice deer. But if I had to pick, my thing would be being out, moving around, and actually getting some exercise. So this weekend, we are going to get out. We're going to uh, take, I think, probably just Ace out. And my two boys, Cal and Clay... It should be a lot of fun. We're going to hunt with some other uh, neighbors in the area that have uh, invited us over to their place. So we're really looking forward to it. But it's 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 funny because now I have property that is phenomenal deer hunting property as well as phenomenal duck hunting property. And I've gotten away from upland hunting a little bit. So this will get me back to my roots. I'll probably get out and go a few more times to some public hunting around our property up here in uh, central Wisconsin. And just, just get out, get some exercise, and run the dogs and enjoy it. With that said, the key to having a good dog is lots of birds. If you don't have time to go out and hunt where there's wild birds or release birds, join a club. I've always been part of a club. I haven't the last few years just because with the TV show, we were gone so much in hunting about the last thing that I could get a get, a, get, a get out of jail free card for or even want to do is hunt more. Had a... Uh, membership to a club for many years, but ultimately was just using the birds right at the end because, quite honestly, I just didn't have time for it. So I think it's something that I'm going to do a few times this year. It is something that everyone should do because to get a good dog, you have to have birds for the dogs to be around. I don't know how many people will have a dog, they get them trained, and then they say, you know what, the dog just hasn't figured it out. And you ask, well, where are you going? Well, I'm going public hunting on weekends. When you go on the weekends, there's a lot of hunting pressure. There's a lot of hunters out there. There's only so many birds. They've probably been shot up a lot during the week. So you're probably not going to find many birds. you got to give the dogs something so that they're having fun and they understand why they're there. Training is a condensed version of hunting because you're doing scenario type training. You're taking the dogs out. You're working with them. You're putting birds in spots you want them to look. But you're not walking around for an hour and a half. It just, as a trainer, you just wouldn't have time. 
So it's something that the dogs are getting out and getting work, but once they get past that 15 minute mark, they're like, all right, cool, well, training's over. Well, once you go hunting, it's the same thing to the dogs. They think that once you get past 15 minutes, it must be over. There's no reason to look. So, hey, let's just chill out here and I can walk next to you. Get lots of birds. Enjoy it. They're still phenomenal to eat. Um, when you look at a state like my state of Wisconsin, the majority of your birds that you're shooting, if not probably 100% are released birds either way. So going to a club where they have released birds or going to a public hunting ground where they have released birds, obviously public hunting ground, they're free. But if you join a club, you have to pay for them. But they're still phenomenal to eat. <coughs> if you get in a good club or you got a, our state releases good birds, you have birds that fly really strong. And it, yes, it's not as challenging per se, but it's still fun to get out there. If you're looking for releasing birds, you've got a young dog or a dog that doesn't have a lot of experience. I like using the chucker partridge. Now I've hunted those out in the uh, Southwest uh, mountains of the U S and that is a hunt. If you wanted a hunt where you were going to get the holy tar beat out of you running up and down mountains, go chucker hunting. The chuckers here are release birds. Why I like them, they don't run as fast as a pheasant. They still fly very strong, and they're fun to shoot at. So that would be what I would do if you have a young dog or if you're just looking for something to get out and stretch your legs. Too many of us sit inside too often. We need to get out. We need to go have some fun. We need to get some exercise for ourselves and our dogs. So book yourself a hunt. Find a public hunting ground. Join a club. Get into upland hunting. I'm telling you, nothing is more fun than having those big, colorful birds rock it out of the out of the cover. The funny thing for me is that the birds that I miss are usually the ones that fly straight away, that have flushed 10 feet in front of me, and I shoot three times and miss. If a bird's coming on a crossing wind of 40 miles an hour and is at 30 yards, I usually kill them every time. <clears throat> it's just fun. Get out there, hit them or miss them. You have a lot of laughs and you get to spend time with your family. So I hope that gives you something to think about for yeah, your future and for, for this upcoming season. We're just getting into it. Uh, there are still so many opportunities for waterfall hunting, deer hunting. Add that upland in for just a day or two and you won't be disappointed. So stay tuned for more after this. This was our main part of our show. Next, I wanted to talk about some upland training tips. And then after that, we're going to talk about hunting tip. All that and more coming up after this. Our great fans of the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast, we are growing at an astronomical rate, and I want to thank you all. I do ask one thing from you. Please give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Please give us a thumbs up, follow us, subscribe to us on whatever other platforms you're on. And the most important thing I can ask Share our podcast with your friends so that we can grow our love for the dogs and dogs in the field and make it so that people are more involved in our sport. Again, thank you so much for being listeners. Take care. Jeff Fuller from Sporting Dog Adventures and Soggy Acres Retrievers. In our house, my wife hates having the plastic kennels and wire crates. We need them for the dogs because we have times when they need to be put somewhere, but she cannot stand the look. So we talked to DCT Kennels and we now have a new partnership with them for a product that is a crate, but also a piece of furniture. If you want something that is practical as well as great looking, check out DCT Kennels. Welcome back to the show. A quick tip for you for dog training on Upland. And also really for, for anything. But what I like to do is something called a scent drag. And it's funny because we did a real simple video for the TV show years ago. It's one of our most viewed on our YouTube channel. If you haven't, Sporting Dog Adventures TV on YouTube. Uh, there's numerous, numerous videos there. We also have a platform on Rumble, which is uh, like YouTube. And Carbon TV. And my goodness, there's just a bunch. Uh, we've got... Basically, I think six different platforms out there. I don't know what even what they're all called, but if you do a Google, you can always find our show. Uh, but the scent drag was one of the most popular ones. And I think it's because 
many people get a young dog, they want to train and they don't know what to do. So what I do, I take a plastic bumper that I've cleaned with a scent free soap. I put a little bit of conquest, uh, bird down scent on it, and then just drag it through the cover. Make sure that you're wearing rubber boots and that you've washed your boots as well. So there's no scent on them and just drag it through the cover, start out short, maybe 10 feet, work to the point where you're doing 50 feet, keep the dog on trail. You might have to call them back over. You'll see them where they start to hit on it. The key to a good dog for upland or for tracking, even if it's waterfall, it's down, is having a dog that is methodical in how they work. When you have a young dog, they get excited, they bomb around, they don't spend the time they want, and they get off. They basically get off track. That's why doing the scent drag is such a good thing to work with them on. Uh, the other thing you can do if you want to do something fun is you take a tennis ball or a rubber ball. Again, wash it down, put some scent on it. If you've got shorter cover, you can actually bounce it through the cover so you get a little bit different type of a scent trail. Uh, we did that for the TV show and we were trying to basically go through and show how to teach tracking of a, a wounded deer. We put the uh, blood scent on it and bounced it along. Different things that you can do, but always remember, clean whatever item you're using to spread the scent thoroughly before so that they're not finding your hand or your feet. And again, also your boots. Clean your boots. You want to make sure that you are giving the dog one scent to find and not your scent so that when they're actually out hunting, they don't go, hey, there's supposed to be human scent on this as well. So just a quick tip for you. Next, we are going to talk about our hunting tip. And for our hunting tip, I wanted to talk about how I use deer hunting to scout waterfall. All that and more coming up after this. Jeff Fuller again from Soggy Acres Retrievers and Sporting Dog Adventures Podcast. When you look at hunting, you need to have yourself prepared. Our good friends at Mac Outdoors have reloading supplies as well as great clay target machines to get you prepared so you have more success in the field. Don't get that dirty look from your dog. Check out Mac Outdoors. Hey, this is Jeff Fuller from Sporting Dog Adventures Podcast. I want you to know that we buy all of our trucks at Boucher Automotive. We go to Janesville. They've got a great selection, great staff. If you're looking for a new truck or car, check out our friends at Boucher Automotive in Janesville. Next, I wanted to talk about a unique way that I scout for waterfall, and that is sitting in my deer stand. We own uh, marshes, so we've got great waterfall, not this year, but normally we've got really solid waterfall hunting, and we've got great deer hunting, especially this year, because we've got uh, very little water. So I will actually pick a stand that is over in an area where I'm thinking of duck hunting, and I will sit and watch the birds and just see how they work, see where they're landing, see if there's a huntable population of them. I was out this morning. I could hear birds, uh, some mallards. The sad thing there, I'm sitting in a ground blind, so I couldn't see. I enjoy being up in a uh, tree stand so that you can just watch everything that goes. If you are in an area that has uh, a lot of marshland, I might take going out and seeing where the birds are actually landing after that. I've had a couple of uh, trips in the past where I've had to take take a boat out and go down river uh, from our one property and go see where those birds are going. But it just it makes it where you're kind of multitasking and getting the best of all worlds. You're figuring out what is a good look for you uh, or what is a good time to go waterfall hunt while you're also getting to deer hunt. I have found from a deer hunting perspective, it also makes me sit different stands that maybe I wouldn't normally sit it's really uncovered some great spots for me that I, I just probably wouldn't have sat in just because you get so fixated on one area that's always produced. So there's our hunting tip for you. Use your deer hunting, sit in tree stands, scout your ducks. It helps. Gives you two things to do at once. I want to thank you so much for listening to today's show. If you can, please give us a five-star rating, thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you want to donate some money, go to Anchor Support. <laughs> Either way, we want to thank you because we know there are so many, so many choices out there, and we appreciate your listenership. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great week, and God bless. 
Sporting dog adventures Run, boy, run Everything you need is here Under the sun